and welcome to Community Checkup. I'm Kim Sharp. So I think it's like really natural and normal for people to think about their own individual health. But have you ever spent any time thinking about the health of our community? Well, I have some people here with me today that spend a lot of time and devote a lot of energy thinking about just that and working on it. So let me, let me introduce you. Nicole Teal is with the University of Colorado Health. Linda Fallion is with the Early Childhood Council of Larimer County. And Christy Bush is with the Larimer County Department of Health and Environment. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks. Thank you. Christy, let's start with you because I believe you're working on community health as we speak. Tell us about that. So in 2008, Colorado passed a law um, reauthorizing public health, uh, the local public health system, and as part of that law, um, required that counties um, do a community health assessment and prepare a five-year community health improvement plan um, every five years. And so in 2011, Larimer County um, embarked on that effort, or started that effort. So every county in Colorado is told that they have to do this? Every county in Colorado. Okay. Um, in most counties, the health department is leading that effort. There's not a, 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 there's not a health department in every county, but um, some counties are joining together to work on, on this effort, and um, some counties may be it not, might not be the health department who's leading the effort. In Larimer County, the health department is coordinating the effort for the county. So that's an important point because this is not a health department plan, this is a community plan. And the health department is just facilitating the process. So that leads me to believe that others are involved. Yes, absolutely. Who else is involved in the process? Um, throughout the process, a number of organizations have been involved. Um, we've had some, uh, we have a leadership team that is guiding the effort that is made up of um, representatives from eight organizations, eight or nine, I believe. And um, those include like our major hospital systems, um, our Board of Health, um, the Health District of Northern Larimer County, as well as others. Okay, that makes sense. So where are you at in the process? Uh, well, right now we're working on developing that five-year community health improvement plan. Um, we completed a community health assessment in 2012, and what that entailed was looking at um, a lot of county level data, everything um, that we could get our hands on basically at the county level and um, use that data to help inform us about uh, the health status of our community. What did you learn? How healthy are we? Well, we are doing well in some areas and we have room for improvement in other areas. And so once we completed the assessment, we realized that we needed a way to organize this in some fashion so we could begin to select some priorities. We used an existing model, the National Prevention Strategy, to narrow down to 15 potential priority areas. And then we asked for input from our community about which fewer number should we focus on so that we can really focus on some areas where we can start tracking improvement or trying to make improvement and then tracking that. So let's get down to the bottom line. What was decided on in terms of the priorities that you're gonna work on? Uh, the Community Health Improvement Plan will have two focus areas and they are mental and emotional well-being and raising healthy children. Great, and Linda, the latter brings me to you, the raising healthy children with the with the work you do with the Early Childhood Council, tell us why that's an important topic for our community fo to focus on. Well, primarily because the early years really set the path for young children, and a great deal of what happens in those early years influences children's ability to take advantage of school learning, to do well in school, to do well in life, to gain the skills that help them be successful. So if you enter school with health problems, your ability to learn is drastically impacted. If you have a child who has uh, a cavity, for example, that's not treated, how likely is it that child's gonna be able to pay attention and really listen and attend to what's going on in class? If that child comes to school maybe without as good a breakfast 
as they should have, if they haven't had access to health care. All of those things impact a child's ability to be successful. So at the Early Childhood Council, we really focus on the first eight years of life and trying to improve the experiences that children have. So does the priority area of raising healthy children only focus on those first eight years, or are we talking about old, older children as well? We're talking about older children as well. Um, we are looking at raising healthy children as a means of uh, giving future adults and a, a good start in life. And so I think that, um, well, we have, we have input into the plan from Early Childhood Council um, and other representatives of Early Childhood. We are actually working with everyone up to age 24. So we're children until we're 24. <laughs> I just yeah. missed the cut. <laughs> just missed. <laughs> Nicole, tell us how you're involved in, in developing this plan. Yeah, so I sit on the Mental and Emotional Wellbeing Committee. Um, and this became, I think, a choice as a priority in our community um, because mental and emotional well-being really lays the foundation across the lifespan, starting in your utero, across the lifespan um, that is essential to health overall. So mental and emotional well-being goes far beyond just mental health, but really translates into those um, health condition, physical health conditions as well. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about the work that's being done, I guess, in these subcommittees around these two priority areas. What, what kind of work are you doing? Sure. So there's um, uh, 15 or so of us um, that come to the Mental and Emotional Wellbeing Committee. Um, and we've gone through some processes and um, we're in the process of um, kind of focusing on exactly what our priorities within um, mental and emotional well-being will be because it is very broad. Um, we decided to work from a framework uh, that Christy found, the National Prevention Strategy she mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, which includes four core areas, um, including early childhood development and parenting, um, community connectedness and healthy relationships, um, support being provided for individuals and communities surrounding their mental and emotional well-being, and lastly, uh, access to quality mental health services for all. So those are our four um, focus areas uh, that we're using as a framework to not reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so right now we're really trying to narrow um, some of those areas down because it is very broad. Uh, we are looking at things like risk and protective factors, which are evidence-based um, Department of Health and Human Services. Let, let's just stop right there. Yeah. What's a risk and protective factor? Good question. <laughs> uh, so risk and protective factors are um, factors that affect the individual, family, and community. And so what they mean is that there are certain either um, risky things that could happen to an individual, family, or community, or there are positive things that actually prevent or help protect the individual. And these translate to mental and emotional well-being and, and ultimately overall health. Can you give us a couple examples? Sure. Um, so for example, um, in utero, um, mom uses substances. So that's going to be a huge ra risk factor from the get-go versus a protective factor being the mother is seeking prenatal um, consult with the doctor and having all her set appointments mm -hmm. and the baby already has a, a healthy start from the get-go okay. before the baby's even born. Okay. And you know a lot of risk and protective factors do start at um, when the baby is born but we realize that it goes it starts beyond in utero. Linda what's work or what's going on in your committee uh, in terms of well, I think there's a lot of work around just trying to identify what the goals and priorities are and then what activities can actually be engaged in. And one of the things we've been working with Christy on is taking the work that out of the Early Childhood Council strategic plan, so it's work that's already going on, and seeing how that fits so that we don't duplicate 
what's going on in the community by creating two parallel plans. And sense. I believe that uh, you're doing that with more than one organization. Yes. So one of the key populations that we work with is child care providers because we know kids mm -hmm. spend a lot of time in child care and that what happens there in terms of their health and safety is really critical and, and the nutrition that they get and the physical activity opportunities that are provided to them. So one of the things that we try to incorporate in that plan is engaging the early childhood and child care community in supporting children's health. So that's one of the areas. Um, you're also working with... Uh, I'm working with the Partnership for Healthy Youth, youth. Um, which is an organization that is, um, it's a, made up of, oh, probably close to 20 different community partners uh -huh. um, that is also in the process of identifying some goals and strategies, and so their, their goals and strategies will fit, fit in well with the Community Health Improvement Plan. Um, so they must be focused on older youth? They are, um, school age. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to say from uh, about the Raising Healthy Children area, if you think about that, that approach is really broad. It encompasses a lot of, um, so while well, it's focused on a population, there's all kinds of health issues that you would be um, needing to address in that population. So one of the things that we learned from our assessment piece was that um, we're really lacking in, in data about children and youth in um, Larimer County. Mm -hmm. So one goal for raising healthy children will likely be trying to get access to better county level data. Um, Why are we lacking that data? Well, um, Larimer County hasn't participated in the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which is, um, which is one place that, one um, survey that lots of other communities are able to access data from. Um, we will have a um, Healthy Kids Colorado survey will be, will be, um, imp will be implemented this fall in schools, in Poudre and Thompson school districts. But not um, in Estes Park? Not in Estes Park. Um, so we'll have some data there, mm -hmm. and there are some other efforts um, underway to try to address the issue of not having great data on youth and kids. So um, one of the things also that's likely to happen during the first year of our plan is that we'll be we'll be looking at, we'll be continuing to do a needs assessment with, on looking at, at specifically at kids. So when we did our assessment in 2012, we were looking at all populations and all, all, all topic areas. Now that we've got our two priority areas, we're learning that we still have some unknowns out there, some things that we need to understand better um, before we can really come up with the strategies for improving health. I have a question about how much public input has gone into this process so far. So um, in early part of this year, we asked for public input on the priority areas. Um, we did that through a web-based survey that was available to anyone. Um, was that publicized? Got, it was. We publicized it through social media and we did um, some uh, pub press releases and, and things like that, and lots of mm -hmm. e email distribution. Um, and we received 165 responses, and, and it's a pretty lengthy survey and required um, about 45 minutes of looking at slides. So we were pretty happy that we received that much input. Um, the interesting thing was, so we received input from 165 individuals, and we also um, did I mentioned earlier, uh, had community leader two-day meeting where we invited community partners who are who are have some expertise in in this area in public health to come to a meeting and listen to our assessment and ask them about what they felt the priorities should be. And what we found was that the survey results and the community um, leader input meeting results were the same. And so we felt pretty confident mm -hmm. that uh, these things are really truly what our community uh, wants to see, where they want to see improvement. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. As an individual citizen, 
how might this plan impact my own personal life? So, you know, I think at first it, it might not be really apparent um, because right now what we're working on is that infrastructure piece. Um, over the next few years, as the plan gets implemented, there, I, I, I would hope that um, the citizens of, in our community will start to hear things about some positive mes messaging around um, mental and emotional well-being. I don't know exactly what those will be yet since we haven't developed them. And that um, there will be, I, I, I hope that there will be um, opportunities for people to, to learn more and be engaged in the community health improvement process. Mm -hmm. and. Um, strategies as they unfold. But. Yeah, it all sounds very technical. So, Linda, from your perspective, what would you hope that people get out of this process, or, or how could it impact um, the lives of the young children that you work so hard to nurture? Well, I think if you're talking big picture dreams, I think we would hope that every child in Larimer County has access to health care, that no one has, no young child has health conditions that go untreated mm -hmm. simply because they don't have the right insurance or they don't have a doctor who accepts their insurance or they don't know where to go to get help. That those processes that families need support in to keep their kids healthy will be supported. And so I think that's a huge hope. Uh, I think that kids will have more opportunities to be active. They'll have better understanding of what's healthy to eat and have access to healthier foods. Sometimes, you know, it can be cheaper to buy foods that are maybe not as good for young children than it is to buy the really healthy things, and that's really a challenge. And so maybe education around, you know, how do you provide a healthy diet on a budget that kids can enjoy and be healthy and maybe not have so much processed and fast food. I think that's always a challenge. So every aspect of the child's life will be supported and I think, you know, it would be my dream and maybe all of our dream that ensuring that children are healthy from, like you said, from even in utero, that they have prenatal care and have all the things they need to be successful would be a priority for the community that everybody, even the people who don't have children or who've raised their children and they're gone, would still be invested in that idea that the well-being of our children is really a measure of the well-being of our community. Mm. And so I think that would like be that. what Absolutely. I would hope, that that would be recognized as one of the ways we understand that we're a good community. Every year you see all of the, Fort Collins is a really great place to live, but I would like to have the focus be not from, you know, it's a college town or, mm. or whatever it is, or a lot of, you know, a lot of things, a lot of reasons people you know, we get in the magazines as mm -hmm. a great place to live, that the well-being of our children and the health of our community would be mm -hmm. one of those things that would trigger us being considered a great place to live. That sounds wonderful. So. What about you, Nicole? What would, how would you hope that people are impacted by the work that you're doing around emotional and mental well-being? Yeah, well, <clears throat> that's one of the things that we're really looking at right now is we're, um, we are looking at it from a prevention perspective, but we understand that it's a continuum. It's, it's promotion, it's prevention, it's intervention, it's treatment, it's maintenance, it's all of these things. Um, but really, <coughs> we also see that this is, um, it affects people across the lifespan. So even though I use the example of in utero, right. um, mental and emotional well-being we could target all ages, all shapes and sizes. We, we could talk ages. about that in a real personal way just right here today, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but one of the things we're really trying to do, uh, get to a point at in our committee, the Mental and Emotional Wellbeing Committee, is we're trying to sort of, um, by using the risk and protective factors um, and these, this other um, evidence-based model, communities that care, 40 developmental assets, we're kind of using these things that have already been done to try to see what does Larimer County do really well and what do we need to work on. So potentially there may be some interviews that need to happen with some key players that play a part in um, 
in the spectrum of you know, <coughs> prevention to treatment. Um, so we're going to see throughout time, we're going to look at what populations are being missed and what services need uh, to be in place and which ones do we have that are really strong that we can continue to build upon. So really um, trying to reach everyone because mental and emotional well-being does not discriminate. <laughs> it do touches everyone. Do you think that you'll also work on that stigma that goes along with um, mental illness? Absolutely. We've been talking about that in our committee, of mm -hmm. course. And uh, what we're realizing is that mental he mental health disorders are going to be more common than chronic health conditions uh, around 2020 is is kind of the forecast Why? behind that we're seeing uh, the impact uh, that even from early childhood we're seeing um, we're seeing trauma mm. and we're seeing you know whatever it is even starting from childhood that can contribute to um, psych disorders showing up as early as 14. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're really just seeing it more and more common. Um, and of course it has to be mentioned that certain populations are not receiving the treatment mm -hmm. that they so much deserve. But you're working toward making sure that they also receive the treatment they need. Absolutely, and you know we really are trying to come from a prevention mm -hmm. perspective so that it doesn't get to that point with mm -hmm. some people, but of course okay. we wanna be able to intervene and Great. work on treatment as well. So Christy, the plan will be finished when? December of this year. However, it is really a, a She says with the deer <laughs> in the headlights. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a lot to do, but I say that with a little more comfort okay. now than I did even just a few weeks ago as I, as I really get, um, as we're getting near to our deadline, it has yeah. to be done at the end of December for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. And and I realize though that it's it's never a complete document. It's a living document. It's one that we will be continually updating as we progress. So we'll have a framework. We'll have an outline mm -hmm. for the plan and um, we'll have we'll have a timeline in there. However, there are um, you know, we will be learning new things as we go over the next, you know, as we progress through the next several years and as we learn more we will continue to update our our plan how can people continue to get information about this plan as it progresses yep. um, we've got a website currently and the website will be continually updated as we make changes um, you can go to the website at um, www.larimer.org slash health and if you search for public health improvement plan you'll find the plan there okay Great. Well, thank you for being here with me today and sharing this information about how you're improving the health of our community. And thank you for joining us. And thank you to the University of Colorado Health for sponsoring our show. And we'll see you next time.